Hi, um, I just wanted to come on here and share um, what the Lord has put on my heart here of recently. Um, there's a lot of videos out there where a lot of just people receiving signs, um, visions, and, and dreams um, of the coming judgments that are to come, that are prophesied, that are written in the Bible. Um, and I think that there are, I would, I would guess almost the majority of Christians probably see a lot of that and kind of roll their eyes and, and say, well, you shouldn't focus on that. Um, you should just spread God's love and um, not incite fear or talk about judgments or talk about any of that. Um, I think there's just a lot of people out there that feel that way, Christians and non-Christians alike. Um, but I want to share with you um, from Jonah something that's been on my heart the last couple of days um, about, first of all, and, and my pastor talked about this in one of his talks, um, whenever God has a prophet warn or prophesy um, coming judgments, he does it so that he brings his people back to him so that they would repent and that they would turn away from their sins. It's never just to be mean. It's, it's never just to be scary, just to be scary. It's, it's to warn people of consequences because he loves us and because um, a loving parent disciplines or warns of consequences, right? Um, so I'm just going to read to you from Jonah. Um, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, set out for the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it that their wickedness has come to my attention. And of course we know that, that Jonah instead, um, turned away and tried to, well, he just tried to run away because he didn't want to warn the city of, of Nineveh. Um, in fact, later on in, um, the book of Jonah, uh, Jonah gets angry um, and says, Now, Lord, didn't I say this would happen when I was still in my own country? That's why I tried to get away to Tarshish ahead of time. I knew you were a God who is merciful and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in grace, and that you relent from inflicting punishment. Therefore, Lord, please just take my life away from me. Ma from me. It's better for me to be dead than alive. Um, Nineveh, or sorry, uh, Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh and proclaim to it that their wickedness has come to, the, to God's attention because he knew that God was a merciful God full of grace. So that's kind of the opposite of, I feel like, the, the sentiment that is among a lot of Christians um, and then even a lot of like non-Christians who believe that if 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 someone comes to a place or a city or a person and says, your wickedness has come to God's attention, um, they would think that, oh my gosh, that person is, is so mean, or he's saying that because he doesn't have God's love in him, or um, he's saying that because he's not, um, because God just must be mean, or maybe this person's mean, or doesn't have the right heart. But here we find that Jonah didn't want to say that because he knew how full of grace and mercy God was, which is interesting. Um, so anyways, yes, uh, Jonah ran away, um, was thrown overboard from the ship because of the, the storm, um, and he um, went into the belly of the whale for three days, and then he ended up praying, um, and he he repented. Jonah re repented and said, those who worship vain idols give up their source of mercy, but I, speaking my things aloud, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation comes from the Lord. And then Adonai, the Lord, spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out onto dry land. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I will give you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh as as the Lord had said, now Nineveh was such a large city that it took three days just to cross it. But Jonah began his entry into the city and had finished only his first day of proclaiming. And he proclaimed, in 40 days, Nineveh will be overthrown. Now, 
when the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he got up from his throne, took off his robe, and put on sackcloth and sat in ashes. He then had this proclamation made throughout Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, no person or animal, herd or flock, is to put anything in his mouth. They are neither to eat nor drink water. They must be covered with sackcloth, both people and animals, and they are to cry out to God with all their might. Let each of them turn from his evil way and from the violence they practice. Who knows, maybe God will change his mind, relent and turn from his fierce anger, and then we won't perish. When God saw by their deeds that they had turned from their evil way, he relented and did not bring on them the punishment he had threatened. So we see here that the fruit of Jonah warning uh, about God's judgment on this city because of their, their uh, what does it say, the violence they practice um, and their evil ways. The fruit of that was them turning to God, repenting, and God showing them mercy. Oh, an entire city was saved because Jonah proclaimed that, that of, of the coming judgments. Um, and then later on in the book of Jonah, uh, Jonah basically has a temper tantrum. It's really angry that God forgave them and showed them mercy and grace because um, Jonah was still angry towards, towards those people, but um, the Lord said, you're concerned over the castor bean plant, which cost you no effort. You didn't make it grow. It came up in a night and perished in a night. So shouldn't I be concerned about the city of Nineveh in which there are more than 120,000 people who don't know their right hand from their left, not to mention all the animals. So, I just want to share this because um, I just want Christians to know um, and then even non-Christians to know that if someone speaks what God has told them to speak about any coming judgments or punishments, it's out of love. It really is. It's it's from the heart of God. Because the heart of God is, is not because he's just waiting to, to give judgments and, and punishment, like he's excited about it. No, the heart of God is that maybe if they knew the consequences of their evil ways and the violence they practice, if they knew of the coming judgments, the consequences, they would know that I care and that I love them and that they would turn to me, humble themselves before me, um, and repent and stop practicing violence and following after their evil ways. So um, for all of those out there that, I've, I've, I've heard this a lot lately where, um, oh, if, if, if they're a true man of God or woman of God, then they would only prophesy um, encouragement and positive messages with um, about God's love and 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 af beautiful affirmations over them. Well, that's good too. But there's a time and a place for both. We should be prophesying if we are told to prophesy by God. We should be prophesying what God wants us to prophesy. We should be warning what God wants us to warn about. We should be saying only what God wants us to say. And um, depending on the person, the context of the situation, we cannot question God. I mean, he's, he's all knowing truly. He knows exactly what each person needs to hear when they need to hear it. And if it so happens to be warning about, warning someone about, you know, your wickedness has come to God's attention and, um, you know, like for example in Jonah, in 40 days the city will be overthrown. If God gives that message, then that person has to say that message. And it's not to be mean, it's to turn them back to God and to restore them. To save them, to save an entire city, to save the whole world. So, um, I just want to put that out there. So, when 
other Christians hear from from God um, and are talking about the coming judgments that are prophesied about um, what's written if they're told to say that don't come down on them and don't just completely just shut your ears and start mocking and scoffing because the fruit of it could be really good. An entire city could be saved. And the entire world could be saved. So, all right. I love you guys, as always. And um, I pray that you guys all, all are all blessed. Um, feel free to leave any prayer requests in the comments below as well. Um, I would be honored to pray um, with you. So, all right. I love you guys. Bye.